everyone, this is April, and welcome to my page, April Notes. I am so excited to bring these cards to you today. As I'm sure many of you are, I am under a mandatory stay-at-home decree, and so I've had a lot of extra time to make cards. And I just thought I would make some nice cards that I could send to some friends to, you know, let them know that they're still loved, and even though they're far away, that I'm still thinking of them. Also, I wanted to show how I created the beautiful background with the palm leaves using a stencil I made in my Silhouette Studio and cut out on my Silhouette die cutting machine. So, let's go ahead and uh, let's get started. So, first is I really just want to show the stencil. This is the stencil that I cut from my Silhouette Studio and I cut it out of just this plastic folder that I found because I didn't have any traditional like stencil material but it's pretty durable I'm able to wash it which I like and I mean it's held up pretty well so far just washing it with water so I use this red plastic or kind of pinky and then I have another one that I want to use for future stencils but I would like to show how I did this in Silhouette Studio. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. So in the Silhouette Studio program, what you're going to want to do first is you are going to want to find the cut file that you want. So I went to the Silhouette Store and oh, I typed in palm leaf, but actually I typed in leaf stencil. And so you want to type in, you know, whatever you actually want to look for. I knew I wanted a leaf background to go with the little slots that I put in the card. So I did this. I typed in leaf stencil, not palm leaf. And you see, I already own it, but that's the one that I found. So I went ahead and I bought it. Uh, it's saying download now because I already purchased it. And I did purchase the uh, personal version, not commercial. And so what I'm going to do is, since I already own it, I'm going to go find it in my library. And I'm just going to pull it onto my grid there. Now, I'm resizing my grid to 5x7 because that is the size of my card. I've been making a lot of 5x7 cards lately. And I found that I don't have stencils that quite fit. So I, that's why I partly decided to make my own. Now what I'm doing here is I'm locking the aspect ratio so that the stencil doesn't get distorted and then I'm going to go ahead and resize it so it fits perfectly over 5 by 7 uh, 5 by 7 card and I'm just making sure that it's kind of centered that is exactly where I want it to be so what I'm doing here is selecting stencil material for the cutout and then I'm going back because I realized I forgot to resize my mat to 8.5 by 11 so I know where this stencil will actually cut out. And then at this point you would just send it to your Silhouette Studio but I'm not going to show that part because it takes a while to cut out um, and that will be a very long video. So this again is what the stencil looks like and I really liked how it turned out, nice, crisp and sharp. Um, and I'm going to use that to do some ink blending with my Distress Oxide inks. And I'm using the Life Changing uh, Brushes by Pick Events. I love these. So as you can see, I sped this up because I don't think you want to sit and watch me <laughs> speed uh, speed color forever. But I, I really love inking up backgrounds. And so I grabbed a little bit of green. I grabbed a little yellow. And... The thing is, is I'm really not uh, careful. I'm kind of lazy, so <laughs> I'm really bad at cleaning my brushes after. I, I do try to keep colors the same type of colors with colors like pink and red. Sometimes I'll mix green and yellow. Sometimes it doesn't work so out so well for me. Um, but I'm going ahead and then inking up the background, and I'm going to be making five cards. So I'm going to be doing um, uh, some inking. So that's what the green background looks like. Now I've grabbed seven colors and I'm really going to town because I've got time. And so I'm starting, um, you know, I can't even remember the name right now. I think it's Worn Lipstick. 
you know, I'm going to put the names below in the description. Sorry, I just can't quite remember looking at this now. But I know that's warm lip lipstick. Um, and I think I have mowed lawn and salty ocean. Sorry, my head's in the way. <laughs> Ultraviolet. You know, I'm making a rainbow, which, look, it reminds me of L.A. And I'm going to be sending this card to some friends who live in L.A. Because it just reminds me of L.A. And the palm trees. So, I have all these cards. I inked a few uh, ahead of time just to save time. I'm not going to show those videos. But I do want to show the sloth. So, this is a set from the Stamps of Life. At Life. I have the stamp set and the die set. And the dies cut out these cute little sloths. Look at that. Look at that little face. They're smiling. Sloths always look like they're smiling. <laughs> uh, and so before I hear everything together, I do want to cut out some strips on vellum. So I cut out some vellum strips from that basil, uh, basil vellum, which I love. And then I grabbed the stamp set. So I grabbed the sentiments from the matching stamp set and I like them because you know they all have to do with being a sloth and I'm going to heat emboss them in gold with this embossing powder by Ranger the gold embossing powder that is not coming into focus oh well so anyhow I'm going to stamp and heat emboss all of these strips that I'm going to put on the five cards for the sentiments and I like the sentiments because they say things like, don't worry, be happy. There's another one that says, I, I sloth you a lot, I think, or something like that. Now, something I want to show is with Nouveau Gilding Plates and a quickie glue pen, you can actually add just a little bit of a gold touch to the cards, which I only did for two of them because it took a little longer. It's definitely a step you can skip. But what I did was I just used a quickie glue pen and I put a little bit just on the edges and select places for the cards or on the trees that I stamped and then I took some of the gilding flakes and I just flattened them over the glue and I'm just letting it stick for a little bit because I want the glue to kind of dry. I'm going to grab this Nuvo stencil brush um, and if you don't have that, this little thin one, I found a pack of these at the Daiso Japanese um, like dollar store. Love it. So um, the, the Nouveau one's a little pricey, but I, I have both to use. And I'm just going to rub off all of the excess. Yeah, that stuff gets everywhere. <laughs> but that's what it looks like. So I did it on one of the multicolored panels and on one of the ones with the green palm fronds. That's what they're called, palm fronds. Palm Bond, bond, bond is a weird word. <laughs> but now that I have everything put together, so I'm just going to take the vellum bits that I already embossed with the sentiment, and I'm going to adhere them all together. And then, fast forward, look at that, it's presto magic, like a cooking show, I'm done. So I've, I've adhered all of the vellum bits, I don't, I don't know what they're called, bits, vellum pieces, that I've cut to the card fronts. And now what I want to do is I want to pop up the backgrounds. Um, I don't always do this, but I've got time on my hands. And so I'm going to pop up the backgrounds onto the card bases. But first I need to adhere the foam. I'm just going to use some thin foam. Um, it's a lot cheaper than foam tape, which is expensive and kind of thick sometimes. Um, yeah, okay, score tape. Best thing I found, or some sort of double-sided tape. The score tape has one of, been one of the best things I found for adhering the foam to the back of my cards, and I cover both sides. Um, and so I'm going to do that for all of the cards. I am not going to bore you with showing that. I think that is not fair. At first, I was going to like show it like sped up, and I was like, nah. All right, presto again. I've done it. I've adhered these card bases with foam. And now I have to do the sloths. So you notice there were, there were little sloths in the cards. And so I pre-cut out a bunch of the little sloths and branches. And using my Kokoyo, so I say Kokuyo dot liner. I have so many refills of this thing on hand. I love it. Um, I'm just adhering the sloths. And then to finish off the cards, I'm just going to add a few jewels. Now I know that was really fast. I'm so sorry. I am uh, still new at this editing thing, and 
sometimes when the timing right is difficult. I can't believe it. That was already like 10 minutes. <laughs> and so, yeah, I didn't do jewels for all of them. I did not do jewels for the cards that have the gold bits on it. But but I, I, I did do some jewels just for a little bit of extra sparkle. So I'm just going to show them um, real quick. Because you can see them on their card bases. And if you're wondering, the card base that I use is, um, it's, um, oh, I'm running out of time. This is my swan song. The card bases I use are by Cards and Pockets. So I'm going to link all of the supplies below. Uh, I hope you gained something from watching this video. And happy safer at home. I hope everybody is safe and healthy. And I will see you next time. Thank you for watching. Bye.